this whole concept of halting and then reversing. So can you reverse heart disease? Uh, well, let, let's do halting first. Um, it went no disrespect to you uh, at all. You know, it should be the conversation. We've identified, obviously, either overt heart disease. You had a stent, a heart attack. We did a CAT scan or a catheterization. You've got plaque. Um, or you just got a lot of risk factors. Let's find out why. And there's the superficial but still important smoking, blood pressure, blood cholesterol, diabetes, family history, sleep, diet, exercise, smoking. And we want to educate a patient. I get them all to watch Forks Over Knives, What the Health, Game Changers. Literally, they have to watch us. They're going home with an Esselstyn book or they're going home with a Bernard book or they're going home with a Mastering Diabetes book. Or, you know, could be, I don't actually give patients my book as much as I give some of the others, but I do. The Plant-Based Solution would be an excellent book that overlooks, you know, Dr. Ornish's Undo It book. One of the, we got to get education. And as soon as we can identify what seems to be driving, and you mentioned I have a book on a genetic cholesterol called Lipoprotein A. I mean, if that's their problem, we got to talk about that. So once we find what seems to be driving it, and I'd say 95% of people it's either the easy, low-hanging fruit standard problems, or it's one of these, you got to do a little bit more blood work looking for inflammation or genetics or chronic infection or dental health. Shout out to dental health, man. Go get your teeth checked, brush, floss, water pick, avoid you know extra sugary stuff. I actually use some oral probiotics. I mean, whatever you need. Um, do all of that and tell patients it's all important. You might stop the process driving the plaque. So it would be beautiful if I took a 40-year-old woman and did a carotid ultrasound that said she was 48 years old based on her arteries. And two years later, now she's 42 and it says she's 48 years old. I've stopped the process. It's not the most dramatic example that I tend to post on social media, but it's still gratifying to see it. I don't want to do that and see that in the course of two years, it actually worsened at all. We don't want to do that. Then after that, we have to work on reversing it. And, you know, it's going to be more intensification of lifestyle and identification of the underlying risk factors. But there are some magic. And obviously, whole food, plant-based diets, as described way back by Lester Morris, an MD in Los Angeles, a forgotten hero of uh, lower saturated fat, plant-strong diets, Nathan Pritikin. I won't say he's a forgotten hero, but what a warrior for health and reversal of diabetes and blood pressure. He didn't have any direct identification. He just measured thousands of patients and their blood work and their health and their general survival. But then we get to angiograms done by Dr. Ornish, by Dr. Esselstyn, some data published by Joel Furman, again, somebody who's kind of forgotten in the conversation, but he's published some interesting data. I'll just tell you, in my clinic, using particularly these carotid ultrasounds, I mean, there's not a week go by, I don't see half a dozen examples. Oh, good to see you, Joe, Barb, Sue, Mary. Uh, your carotids look better than two years ago. You know, your, your arterial age. And these are computer-driven ultrasounds read at a university, no bias from me, and they're not subjective. They're actually very objective. And there's no doubt you can see plaque shrink. And just to describe that just a bit more, in my field, more and more, we talk about arteries that are calcified hard plaque, arteries that may be a mixture of calcified hard, but they have soft, mushy plaque. And it's probably the soft plaque is in the artery. And over time, it becomes calcified, uh, particularly if you're on a statin medication like Lipitor, Crestor, Zocor, and all. Um, it's probably the soft plaque we can make regress, diminish, shrink, and extremely good lab values, great A1Cs, great blood pressures, great LDL cholesterols. If they have a lipoprotein A genetic problem, and I use a lot of niacin and other agents, we're correcting that. And and then, of course, exercise and then a whole lot of whole food, plant-based diet, foods rich in vitamin C. I think we can, and I think the science is consistent, uh, remove the soft plaque. We may leave some of the calcium there. And if they've had that heart calcium CT scan, we may not make that number go to zero. I don't really tell patients that's what I expect, but I think I can uh, reverse their soft plaque. Just one last statement. 
because there is a little dispute in our community, can you reverse plaque? The state of the art right now for identifying plaque in heart arteries and what kind of plaque is a CT scan of your arteries with dye. It's a pretty fancy test, but it's available. Using a software that's artificial intelligence. And it will tell you, and I've done this on myself kind of as a guinea pig. I went for a test I didn't really need, but I uh, wanted to see it because I have a calcium score of zero. And lo and behold, I had a fleck the size of uh, you know, an omla berry, uh, Indian gooseberry, uh, smaller than that, of a little bit of non-calcified plaque. It was so trivial. I mean, my arteries are pretty good after nearly 45 years of whole food plant-based eating I'm by the latest, the greatest. But the CT scan can be done now and can be done in two years or three years to actually show the soft plaque diminishing. This isn't voodoo. This is cutting edge. This is the leading, most advanced technology in the world. And it's available at certain centers, not a lot. And it, there happens to be a place in Detroit I refer patients to. So we have this new goal that isn't just Dr. Ornish, isn't just Dr. Esselstyn. Shrink plaque, shrink plaque, but specifically shrink soft plaque. And that's what I think I'm seeing a lot of on carotid studies. It's absolutely possible to turn the ship around, but you're going to have to work at it. It's hard work. That's what I tell people. I love what you're saying here because you are giving everybody listening to this hope for what is possible. And so you've seen it in your practice. You have this objective data. And when I'm always talking to people about, hey, they're coming to the program, they're like, oh, you know, maybe in our case, specifically to diabetes, somebody C peptide might be a little bit low or compromised. And they're like, oh, I want to get off insulin. I want to get off my glipizide, my metformin, all these meds, but my C-peptide is low, so I don't really know if that's possible or not. And what I'll always say is, there's only one way to find out, and that's to give this a 100% shot, which is exactly what you're saying. You are communicating that these results that you see happen in people who really do the program and stick to it. So. It depends on where you're coming from like, and how, how, what type of progress you want to make, but it's possible. Yeah. And it's like your program. I mean, food is the foundation, but like Dr. Ornish, it's a multi-phase program. You got to focus on sleep and dental health and fitness and joy and love and emotional health and community and connection. A little shout out to, you know, Blue Zones and getting your little moya of people around you who care about you and the whole thing. So, um, you know, scientists like penicillin, infection, cure, but really lifestyle doctors use a cocktail and it's hard to identify what's the most important part of the cocktail. And frankly, I don't really care. I just want results. I want to halt and reverse lower risk, lead to better outcomes. And, you know, uh, it, it is absolutely achievable. Now, in this special subgroup of people I have way too many of lipoprotein A. We need better pharmacology and there are companies working on it. It's a challenge. Amla happens to be one of the natural products. I use a lot of Amla and Nice and you see good things. Uh, but Novartis and Amgen and others will help us out over the years. But it's interesting. I'll just tell you, I just saw a 55-year-old woman in the last six weeks, a couple different visits. She just was, her brother said, just check her out. Her father had heart disease really young. Our father had heart disease really young. 55 years old, maybe 108 pounds, eats pretty well, little stress in life. Cholesterol 320, this lipoprotein A, sky high. And you might look at the lab values and say, oi, 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 which is what I said to her. Carotid arteries like a 20-year-old, calcium score is zero. The equation's tricky. And I mean, so if you find out you got some lab values, it doesn't mean inevitably that the equation has created plaque. That's why we look, because I brought her anxiety level way down and we're working you know, really naturally without pharmacologic agents because she actually has very young arteries. You know, We've all heard about somebody who had risk factors or didn't lead the perfect lifestyle and had a long age. So we're still trying to figure out why is she, she actually happened to have an HDL cholesterol of 148. I think that's one of the highest HDLs. And in her case, that little sucker must be protecting the heck out of her arteries. But the same patient will show up and have arteries, you know, 30 years older than their birth date. So you just got to personalize medicine. You got to do precision medicine. These are hot but uh, widely used tags. And we're getting better and better at it. You know, everybody's different.
But there's only one Robbie, and we all love Robbie. <laughs> You're so kind, Dr. Cotton. Now, you've mentioned dental health several times. How is dental health connected to heart disease? Yeah. i seeing a delightful 50-year-old woman in the clinic. I saw her Thursday, a couple days ago. Um, and she was sent to me because a blood test many people have heard of, high-sensitivity C-reactive protein. Harvard patented blood test available for about 25 years, 10,000, 15,000 research articles that if your C-reactive protein is elevated as a marker of inflammation, this is classic. We got to go through the differential diagnosis. Are you obese? Do you have sleep apnea? Do you have psoriasis on your skin? Do you have colitis or lupus or rheumatoid arthritis? Do you eat buckets of Kentucky Fried Chicken with Mountain Dew every day as a driver of inflammation? But it turns out this is an overweight woman with otherwise a pretty good lifestyle. And her C-reactive protein went from 5 to 15 to 19. Now it's 40, which is absolutely sky high. And she didn't change much while her labs went up. I'm totally puzzled. So actually, I was back and forth with a really uh, specialty dentist in Detroit today. And we're going to run some, you can actually measure, it's called oral DNA advanced, because she's actually really good at oral health and she sees her dentist. But you never know under a root canal, there can be a hidden infection and she will probably have a full oral CT and bacterial analysis. This is pretty high-end integrative medicine, integrative dentistry. But um, we're searching and, you know, she'll probably go visit a rheumatologist and repeat some labs, but she's had them before and they are very revealing. So you can hide infection in your gums. Probably the most common infection in otherwise ambulatory people is gum infections that may be obvious. So go see your dentist, get those little pockets measured, have them, you know, uh, clean you up scale and remove the tartar and take good care. But there are even more advanced ways, as I mentioned, in this puzzling era. So you really got to take good care of your teeth. Obviously, again, whole food, plant-based diets, naturally low in added sugar, naturally low in chemicals and additives are really good for gums. Uh, although I, I'm not aware of a lot of studies about whole food, plant-based diets and oral health. I just have the sense from patients it's uh, a good path to take.